Hi, I'm Graham Griswood. I've been a member of the British team since 2001. I've competed all over the world, as far away as New Zealand, Japan, China, South Africa. Orienteering is a fantastic sport. It combines running in amazing places with navigation using a map. And the great thing about it is that because the maps are, use a certain set of symbols and colours, you, they're the same all over the world in different countries, so you could go to a different country and you could understand the map straight away. OK, let's have a look at an orienteering map. Brown symbols on the map show the shape of the ground, and contour lines join points of equal height. Water features in blue include streams, ponds and marshes, for example. Paths, rocks and man-made features, such as statues, are shown in black. Colours are used to show different vegetation, with yellow showing open land, white being open woodland or forest, and different shades of green showing thicker forest. The maps all have north lines drawn to magnetic north, that's the same north as on a compass. North is always at the top of the map, and maps are always drawn to scale and have a scale bar on as well. Maps usually have a legend, which tells you what the different symbols mean. This is an example of a simple course which would be suitable for beginners. The start is shown by a triangle, and controls are shown by circles which are numbered. The controls should be visited in numerical order, and then the finish is shown by this double circle here. Generally, there are several courses to choose from, depending on your ability, and in the UK there is a colour-coded system which defines the level of difficulty, so it is easy to pick the right level, starting with the shorter, easy white and yellow courses that stick to paths, and going up through the orange and light green, where you need to cut through the terrain, to the more difficult, physically tougher courses, green, blue and brown. At each control, you'll find a stake with a flag and a timing unit. All the controls are on definite features, so I'm stood here by a crag or small cliff. Other control sites include gullies, depressions, monuments and boulders. As well as the course being drawn on the map, orienteers are provided with a list of descriptions for all the controls on their course. So for example, I'm stood at the northern cliff foot. So with the information that you've got on your map and your control descriptions, you've got plenty to ensure you know what you're looking for. This means that it's not a treasure hunt and you can use your navigational skills. For more information about maps and symbols, click the link in the description. When you get to a control, you register that you've been there by using a timing card. So now you've got all the information you need about maps and control descriptions. A compass is also very useful for setting the map and for taking bearings. There are two different kinds of compass. This is a thumb compass and this is a base plate compass. So for orienteering you're going to want to wear some lightweight running kit. If you're running in the forest you, you'll find that leg cover is usually compulsory but if you're running in urban areas then you can probably get away with shorts. Uh, beginners are probably okay with some trainers, but if you're going to do a bit more orienteering, then you're going to want some, uh, some footwear with a bit more grip, trail shoes or fell running shoes, something along those lines. And now you should be ready to go. The exact start procedure varies depending on the type of course and event. Sometimes you'll have an allocated start time. Usually before you start, you'll have to clear and check your timing device. Then when it's time to begin, you start your timing device, collect your map, and your race begins. When you finish your course, you can download the time you took, compare with your friends. Remember, it is a race, so although you might be out on your own, the fastest time wins. I love orienteering because it combines physical and mental challenge, and that really appeals to me. So I've shown you some of the basics that you need to start off and go to your first orienteering race. The members of the Great Britain team have made a series of short films with skills to help you improve. And if you want some more information or to find a race, then click on the links in the description. Orienteering is a fantastic sport, a great adventure, and I really enjoy it. You can play to your strengths. I think it's just really about committing to the route, choosing one, and then going for it. If you can keep your direction through the terrain, moving as fast as possible, and keeping the orienteering as simple as you can, then ultimately, then you've got the potential to win the race. So go out and have fun.